So I'm just back from watching the game between Drott United and Waterford FC and heading the game park. Uh, full time, Drott had won, Waterford two. And to be honest, I've no idea how Drott had lost that game because they created so many chances in the first half and just could not take them. Um, you know, last weekend against Derry, we had a, had the the excuse, I'd say, I don't believe in using excuses like referees, but we had that as referee kind of had a bad game. But today I thought, I have to say, referee was excellent. Let the game move, got every decision that I could see right, um, and had a fantastic game, full of credit where it's due. Uh, but I don't know how Drada didn't come away with the three points today, or at least a point. Um we had so many chances in the first half. You know, Mark Doyle had two or three really good chances. Denny Corcoran, who you'd expect to absolutely bury them. Um, but still, you know, it just seems to be, at the moment, we're just off form. It's just not going for us. But full credit to Waterford. Um, Mark Bertram has them playing some good football. They're hard-working. They're tough as nails. And, uh, yeah, I was really impressed with the likes of Kane Kavanagh and Shane Griffin. And, um, yeah, no, look, full credit to them. Can't really complain. We just didn't take our chances today, and that's it. Then uh, we move on to next week, and fingers crossed we can we can get out of this rut sooner rather than later anyway. Uh, best luck to you. Uh, full time, and it's draw to one, blues two. I thought we were um, good value for the win. I thought uh, it was fair result. Uh, draw to definitely gave us a game, uh, I thought. Well, we got the goal, we... Uh, tried to uh, shut up shop a bit too early but I think the experience in the team made a difference you know um, when we were looking for that second goal we definitely threatened uh, a lot more I thought uh, I thought you know we could have had a few more uh, as well uh, Junior before he got a second goal uh, before he got our second goal um, he had a great chance and Odomosu made a few good saves for Drada um, Prince Mutsunguma hit the crossbar um, overall you know, it was an it was um I thought the first half was kinda uh, dour enough, um but the second half I thought was very entertaining. And happy enough to come away with the three points now. We have to wait to see what happens. Um Um I can't I don't know when that Bose game has been rescheduled. I think they're the ones playing Finn Harps. Um and uh that that's gonna be important for us. Uh, we're gonna be hoping whoever it is can do a job on them and we'll finally be out of the relegation zone for what feels like the first time in years. Um, but yeah, I suppose the other thing I will say before I finish this up is that, um, this season is far from over, you know, we've got a cup run potentially, and you know, we can keep going up the table, see how far we can go, but we do have to start looking at doing something that we've never done, um, since rebranding to Waterford FC, and that is keeping the players and getting them on contracts for next season. Uh, I hope we're able to do that. And uh, if we can do that, then yeah, I'll, I'll be uh, very optimistic for the future. Hey guys, game just finished in Stradbrook, uh, Cam TV nil, Bray won just three. Uh, let's be honest, it's a comfortable uh, 3 0 win for Bray, could have been more. Um, Cam TV really didn't offer very much going forward, and uh, Bray were comfortable winners in the end. Uh, Bray took the lead uh, in the opening half. Uh, some nice play on the edge of the box from Brandon Cavanagh and Sam Verdon allowed Joe Doyle in, and Joe um, put the ball past the Cam TV goalkeeper come in uh, to make it 1 0. It um it stayed like that for most of the, the first half. Bray had a lot of chances, uh, particularly from corners, and uh, there was a few melees in the box, but uh, Cam Daly was fived. And then in the second half, um, Bray added to their score. Uh, Sam Verdon uh, flicked the ball on uh, from a corner and made it 2-0 uh, with his first goal for the club, uh, which is good to see. Um, Bray then made it 3-0 uh, late on the game. Uh, Brandon Kavanagh uh, scored. Uh, Brandon hasn't scored for us in quite a while, um, but he scored Bray's third tonight uh, with a with a knee finish into the corner. Uh, Bray stay um, cemented their place in the playoffs uh, with Athlone losing tonight. Um, keeps them five points ahead of them, and uh, they've got Wexford Utes next week. Uh, sorry, Wexford FC next week. Apologies. Uh, at the Carlisle and uh, followed by Treaty. Um, so two games, uh, no Treaty are going well, um, but uh, I'd be hoping for three points there and certainly it'll be hoping for, uh, even though Wexford haven't proved, they'll be hoping for three points again next week. So two home games, 
hopefully six points and it would keep uh, Ray's place in the playoffs um, it would firmly keep them uh, uh, in the playoff spots so uh, yeah happy happy enough with the performance uh, it was a wet dull night uh, a lot of heavy rain before the game which didn't make uh, things um, very easy for either side uh, but uh, yeah as I said at the start comfortable win for Bray uh, Cam TD nil Bray Wonders 3 Hi Keith, um, just a review on our game tonight versus UCD in the cross. Um, I was lucky enough to be at the game, which was great. It's great to see fans again, get back into the stadiums and it's great for the League of Ireland. So onwards and upwards in that sense. Um, in connection with the game itself tonight, ooh, first 45 minutes, I thought City played very well again. Played some lovely football um, and started the two lads, Aaron Bolger and Barry Coffey. Um, out of the two of them, Aaron Bolger was the most impressive. Um, what Colin Healy done was he played a 3 1 4, was it 3 1 4 2 formation as such, or 3 1 5 1 formation. Um, and what he done was he played Aaron Bolger in front of the tree and it worked out really well. Um, we played very well. Then we scored uh, to an awful blunder by the UCD keeper coming up to clear the ball at the start of the second half, completely missed the ball. Key Murphy, who has been excellent all season, just kind of uh, you know took the chance and just um, took advantage of the situation, scored. And then City done what they're doing all season. They score and then they just they just completely fall apart. Like basically for the rest of the second half, they were defending. You see the equalised through. Like Barry Coffey gave away a stupid free kick for, around the edge of the box. Um, he man scored from the free kick, hit the bar, came down. And in fairness, Mac McNulty it wasn't his fault. He was like after diving for the ball, hit his legs and went into the goal. And we could have lost it. They hit the post there a couple minutes to go. Um, like I said, like we we seem to be with every team that I've seen at home this year, or even the most of the well at home definitely anyway. We're matching, if not better than most of the teams that are above us. But our problem is is just basically trying to see old games. Um, you you could see it straight away as soon as we score tonight. No, I have to say, and I I have to say, and I wouldn't criticize Colin Healy, but when we went one 0 up, we were under a bit of pressure. But he decided to take off Aaron Bolger and went back to a four four two, and it basically was a four one four one. But it basically invited UCD onto us, and that didn't do us any favors. Um. So, yeah, and just hopefully there as well, just on another note, um, Jonas Hacken in the centre half uh, for Cork City, he was clearing the ball from a corner, I think maybe, or was it a free kick, and clashed heads with a UCD player. It was just an unfortunate situation, but I was right behind the goal and the clatter of the heads, uh, it it was nasty and before he even hit the ground he was knocked out so there was seven minutes added on for the injury alone um so look touch wood that he recovers uh sooner rather than later but it didn't look nice um as i said i suppose if a couple of positives we played well uh our negative is not seen out games when we should be seeing them out and as i said in general with the league of ireland it's great to have fans back in the ground and um yeah so that's kind of basically it all right thanks keith bye hi guys um absolutely heartbroken losing to rovers is never easy but to lose the way we did kind of makes it worse the game was weird because i thought at the start we kept the ball very well we were we reduced rovers to very little um, but we were always missing Matty Smith and a striker. You could just see Benton was playing in that false number nine. It just it was leaving us very exposed in midfield sometimes. And the, the first goal from Andrew, like Rovers, just 
tore us apart. The, the little change of play from him and Watson banging in a goal down. Given that we dominated the first half an hour, I did think we deserved to to be level at half time. Great free from out and out took a deflection, but he needed to have kind of some balls to shoot that in fairness to him. So um we, we took that at half time and just Tom Lee, like I don't understand he was very inconsistent for both teams. He's probably the ref I hate the most in the league. I just I never really rated him and he was inconsistent for both teams all night. We we never really got out of the blocks in the second half. Um I don't know what the why Barrett was taking off for Coughlin. Coughlin never looked like he was fit. He never looked like he was gonna make a difference. I don't know why that new sign and I'm gonna try and pronounce his name and Melvin Lambert weren't brought on quicker. Um, and then as soon as Barrett goes off you can see it and Barrett's a rock at the back and he was keeping everything out Refer, in fairness to Bone he probably didn't mean to put it out for a, for a corner then we get caught in the break man drew great little chip like in fairness we didn't deserve anything from the game in that aspect but I felt we had the right attitude going into it trying to keep the ball and play up against Rovers but without a striker starting and without Smith we, we struggled I do think Rovers will win the league breaks me hard to say but there's no one at their level realistically um, the players get to bring off the bench as well was a big thing I thought Gaffney was very good from, for them and as much as I hate saying it because I'm not a big fan of him Richie Tell was very good but um, in terms of Pats we, we need to just keep winning we can't at this start slump now it has to be kind of we need to go back picking up points we've been playing brilliant over the past couple of weeks so let's hope this isn't a slump Anyway, thanks guys. Alright everyone, Keith asked me to do the post-match reaction for last night's game in the Diet Dublin Derby, also known as the Lewis Derby between Shamrock Rovers and St. Patrick's Athletic. We won the game 3-1 on the night. I thought we were outstanding last night. I thought that Rovers played very, very well. I think that in the second half we picked up an extra gear. I think we've done that a lot since the Slovan away game when we lost 2-0. I think we've really, really brought it back and I think Bravs are really hitting stride now that it's like an unstoppable force at the moment but who's to see what we'll see what'll happen in the next few weeks but it looks really good to Ravers fan. Um first goal of the night was scored by Danny Mandrew in the thirtieth minute. Lee Grace played the ball into Dylan Watts, Dylan Watts slipped inside to Mandrew and he took one touch, if even one touch, and placed it into the bottom right hand corner and although Yaros did see it coming he couldn't stop it. So, 1-0 to Rovers on the 30th minute. And then in the 45th minute, the final kick the game, I think it was really. Because I think the ref blew up as soon as Rovers took what's it tipped off after. This goal was scored. John Mountney scored a free kick. Um, harsh free kick in my opinion, but shall look, I'm always going to be like that, let's be honest. Um, and went through the wall over. Sloppy goal to concede, but shall look. The game even itself out towards the end. Um, in the 60th minute, I think, could be wrong, 58, 59, that's 68th minute. I think it was the 59th actually. Um, Rovers responded by a, I think it was a Gaffney run through, uh, played off defender, hit off defender, went out. A ball whipped in by Watsy, I think. Could be, I'm nearly sure it was Dylan Watts, I'm not sure whether it was Dylan or Richie, because that's usually Richie's side, but I'm nearly sure it was Dylan that whipped it in right onto Pico's head, Pico slotted at home, with a head eye into the bottom corner. Um, very good goal, very good goal to score, Pats are very switched off for that goal, if I'm being honest, I thought that America should have been put on Pico, because Pico, <coughs> because Pico, is that type of player now? I know that's his first goal of the season for us this year, but you look over the past few seasons, Pico has been that type of player that once you what's it, get a corner, you need someone on him or he's going to score. And it was a perfectly weighted ball placed into the bottom corner. And in the 74th minute, Rovers went 3 1 up. A uh, beautiful counter attack. Robbie Benson lost the ball. I think Gary O'Neill passed it on to uh, Roy Gaffney. Roy Gaffney got the ball. Went past one defender, slotted the truth, Danny Mandrew, Danny Mandrew went past another and chipped over Yaros and put the game to bed to be honest because Pats didn't really respond after that if I'm being completely honest. Um, 
I thought Pats were very, very switched off last night. I think that that left back, I don't know who was left back last night, that left back and Yara set them down last night, if I'm being completely honest, because I think that them two lads were, weren't up to the standards that they should be. Um, I thought that the standard of refereeing last night was upon. I thought that Tomney and the two linesmen were very, very bad last night for both sides, not only Rovers. I know that those two Stonewall decisions, well, I could say three or four Stonewall decisions that weren't given Rovers way, but that could have been a few more over the other end that happened to Pats that I just didn't see because I was in the south stand, but I know for a fact that that was three or four Stonewallers that should have been given, but they weren't. Um, and a few GOBS offsides on both sides, both with Rovers and Pats, because them linesmen not keeping up with the play. Um, me players of last night that I thought were outstanding, I thought Lee, I thought our back line was outstanding in general, but I, ha I think that Lee Grace has vastly improved in the past few weeks. I think it's because, and I'm not knocking uh, Sean Hoare, because Sean Hoare's probably been one of our best players this season. I think it's with Joey back in the lineup. I think that Joey has that experience, well, Sean does have the League of Ireland experience, but Joey has that experience, heading on being the elder of our back line, that he can command the back line and show them right from wrong. I thought that Dylan Watts has been outstanding this season and he had a great game last night. I thought Danny Mandrew had one of his best games in the Rovers shirt last night. And I think that, if I'm being honest, if I was going to pick me players of the year for this year, this man would definitely be in contention. I know Rory Gaffney wasn't really a player that many were fearing coming into the season because obviously he had that long of a layoff. Um, I think the Shells game that was on RT last year that we drew in the lull was his last game before like, the pre-season this year. So it just shows that he was a man to prove that that didn't affect him. He was going to come back from that and he did. And he was out, he's been outstanding this season. I really think that Rovers were lacking someone like him. Like Greener had to walk right where and as does Gaffney, but Greener Greener doesn't give and I'm not knocking Greener because I love Greener because of the walk rate and the passion that he gives to us as Rovers fans and the walk rate that he gives to the team. But Gaffney just gives that, that extra something that he's untouchable at times, like. So I be saying they're outstanding now. Next week we have Tweta in the Conference League toward round. We find out on Monday if we beat if we were to beat Tweta over the two legs who we get. But all in all a great performance from Rovers. We outclassed Pats in the second half especially. Um I thought that was one team from about to fifteen, twenty minutes on that was going to win it and it was going to be us. We have Longford next Sunday in the league and I know Pats have done dark which is a test for them so hopefully Dundalk and Nick us a few points off them and we can go on and beat Longford now. I'm not I'm not knocking Longford because Longford have probably gave us two of our hardest games this season. So a good three points are very, very I'm very, very happy that we beat B Pats because that was the top of the table clash that we needed to win. And with a game in hand over them I think that puts a small little gap in between the two clubs. But I'm very happy with that result last night.